Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. We create photorealistic assets together. Um, sorry about my voice right now. I'm recording this pretty early. I just got up because uh, this is the only time that's quiet and we don't get too much noise. We're gonna have a pretty chill video today. I'm just gonna talk about some tips that I think is very helpful whenever you need to texture leather. And I'm gonna demonstrate this in Substance Painter. The tips I'm mentioning is not necessarily related to Painter. Um, it's helpful, it doesn't matter what program you use. Um, but I did texture these boots in Painter. Before we go any further though, please like the video and subscribe to my channel. And uh, if you like, you can click the notification bell and get notified every time there's a new video. YouTube algorithm doesn't work too well sometimes for my subscribers. And just because you subscribe doesn't necessarily mean you're always going to get a new video right away. So that will help a lot. Also, the full version of the texturing process of these boots are up on my Gumroad. Um, it's going to be from modeling to uh, final render inside a Substance Painter. So if you're interested in that, please check it out. I will link the link down below. So let's get into the first tip of texturing leather is that I think it's very necessary and very helpful if you actually sculpt your bigger wrinkles, even sometimes maybe medium wrinkles in the sculpting program before you start texturing. Leather is one of those interesting materials where it can feel very much like cloth sometimes, especially when it's very worn. Um, but also a lot of times it has very hard, uh, firm structure. Uh, you can see that on a boot or a bag. Sometimes it's almost like you're modeling something hard surface, but it's connected with something that's very wrinkly, can get very soft like cloth. So I find that to capture the characteristics, you want to find that contrast between hard and soft. So for the softer cloth-like areas, um, it's definitely useful to actually sculpt the wrinkles. When I first started texturing these boots, I wasn't sure if uh, sculpting was necessary. But it became obvious very quickly that uh, to create that soft, worn look, I would need actual big wrinkles um, for my boots. And maybe even for my base model, I didn't just apply this in the displacement map. I also just used a new uh, base model for rendering as well. And uh, when I was doing these wrinkles, I was uh, not using any symmetry. I think that's also very important. You want different wrinkles on two different shoe. Sometimes I see people do leather shoes and uh, the two shoe has the exact same wrinkles. It always looks super odd. So it's better to take the time and do it twice. So besides the big wrinkles that I'm sculpting, I'm also focusing on where two different material or part of material connects, such as the metal circle, uh, where it's uh, merged into the leather. I feel like you will see the leather part start to puff up around it a little bit. And uh, I'm making sure I have that in my sculpting as well. So my second tip in texturing leather is that if you look at leather, it's actually a blend of warm, cold tones and lighter, darker values. Leather in general has a few different colors, but I feel like this one is a pretty typical one. And as you can see, it has some like yellow, uh, mostly yellow brownish color. And uh, the brown I would consider is a bit like warmer tone and the yellow it's a bit colder and sometimes you can even shift it into green a little bit to create that contrast. In terms of value, you can see there's some really dark, uh, warmer spots uh, and yellow in general is uh, the lighter value of the shoe. Um, so in terms of texturing, it's really a shift and blend between all these things and the blend is generally pretty soft. Because the blend is quite soft, our best bet is to set up a different material that represents all this different color and actually just using a texture brush to apply them. I want to isolate all this layer and start to show you how I was stacking up the colors. So the first a color I started building is this brown color that's in terms of value is kind of like right in the middle uh, maybe slightly darker and it's a warm tone and the second material I built is uh, something that's a bit darker than that and I decided to put it 
onto the more pronounced area of the shoe. And the next material is um is the yellow material where I decided to put it into more the cavity area um according to the reference. And the next thing I did is uh, after looking at the reference, we can definitely see some leather pattern that's coming through. And I think the pattern, the color itself is actually quite bright as well. Uh, that's the interesting about leather is anything that's inside the cavity and you can see the leather pattern is actually a brighter value. It's definitely not always the case, but I think it happens quite a lot. So the last tip I want to offer you uh, in terms of the leather material is you want to create a nice roughness difference between all those different shades of uh, value I just talked about. Leather looks really interesting in terms of uh, roughness and spec. Um, it feels very, very rough in certain areas, but you can always see a broad spread of spec as well. And for me personally to create that, uh, I think the best bet is to separate the roughness value. You can see there's quite a bit of a spec, but it feels like almost uh, it's covered under something. I'm going to show you each layer separately again. So for this mid brown color leather I use as a base. Uh, this is what the roughness value looks like. And um, the darker color, it's a bit rougher. I wanted a very clear roughness difference between those two different values. And the next one is the yellow. It's even more rough because uh, it's almost in all the cavity area and um, it shows a little bit more damage. So I want those areas to be super rough. Uh, same for the leather pattern. I also made it a little bit rougher. So with those roughness difference for different value on the shoe and the value itself is placed in a strategic manner, uh, now you get this nice breakup between um, rougher area and uh, maybe the area that you're going to see a little bit more spec. I texture this shoe to be quite worn. So the mid brown leather that I started with with roughness is not very high to begin with. You can certainly crank it up if your shoe is newer. That is all the tips I have for you today. I hope that it's helpful towards your leather texturing. If you want the full process of me making this shoe, it's up on my Gumroad. I will put the link down below. Have a great day, everyone, and I will see you in the next one.